Starring Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. I thought you'd be pleased. It's quite an honor to give the bride away. Nothing doing. I ain't gonna do it. It's a lot of fiddle-faddle anyway. Oh. How many is it gonna be at the wedding? Well, just relatives and a few friends. <clears throat> I think it's wonderful that Millie found a husband. <laughs> wonderful? It's a downright miracle. <laughs> oh, now, Dad. That girl don't know nothing about nothing except eating. And at that, she's a three-county champion. When she ain't eating, she's she's talking. Hi, Mom. Hi, Gramps. Hi. Oh, hi, sweetie. Where's Porky? Whose well, mom's baking some brownies for the Grange Social. He's the official taster. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Business before pleasure. Uh, besides that, my blue suit don't fit me. <laughs> Gramps is mad because he has to go to a wedding. Who's getting married? Billy Bradford. No kidding. Suffering catfish. Hoochie hook. Oh, honestly, you too. You make it sound like trout season. He's a very nice man, Jeff. You'll meet him at the wedding. Me? Why should I go? Because she's your, um, grandfather's cousin's daughter. What am I to her? Let's see, she's your second cousin, once removed. Well, as far as I am concerned, you can remove me from the wedding plans altogether. Oh, now, Dad, please. Millie will be very hurt. I dare you to tell Jeff what he's got to do. Mm -hmm. You got to be the ring bearer, boy. Ring bearer? What's that? Mm -hmm. You carry along a pretty little red cushion with the rings on it. Then you stand with the bride and groom, looking cute as a little bug. Oh, Mom, have a heart. Now, Jeff, please. It's hard enough arguing with Gramps without taking you on, too. When is the wedding? A week from tomorrow. What date is that? The 17th. The 17th? But, Mom, I can't go then. Doc Weaver's going to take me to a meeting of the fishing club. There's a man that's going to demonstrate on how to tie dry flies. You can do that another time, Jeff. How do you know there's going to be another time? There will be no more discussion about this. It would be a lack of respect not to go. Dad Millie has no father, and you just have to give her away. Well, I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. It makes me nervous. If Gramps won't go, I won't go either. And I'm not going to stand around here talking all day. I got things to do. Oh, come on, Lassie. Porky promised to let us all take some brownies. Come on. Jenny, Ellen Miller, uh, ring Millie Bradford for me, would you please? Uh, hello, Millie? Uh, Ellen again. Dear, listen, I don't want to upset you, but I don't think Dad will be able to come to the wedding. Oh, no, no, it isn't that. It's just, well, you see, he's really much older than any of us realize. Uh, no, no, the thing is that... He just can't stand on his feet for any length of time. Uh -huh. he, he gets tired and weak. Yes, well, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, dear. Yes, of course. Bye. Helen, you've got no call to tell people things like that. What on earth are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I heard every word of it. There ain't nothing wrong with my feet, and I can stand on them just as long as you can or anybody else. And I ain't weak, and I ain't tired. Then why are you refusing to go to Millie's wedding? Well, I got reasons that ain't the reasons that you told her. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry, dear, but it, it's too late now. It'll be all over town. Now you get on that phone, you call Millie, tell her I'm coming to the wedding, and I ain't going to sit down from beginning to end. I'll show them. Oh, Dad. What? If you see Jeff, uh, tell him you're going to the wedding, would you please, dear? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
you, Jeff. Yeah, Gramps? Uh, come in here a minute, will you? Okay. Hello, Porky. How are you? What is it, Gramps? What do you want? Uh, uh, well, it looks to me the uh, proper thing to do is uh, go to the wedding. You and me both. You mean I gotta carry that ring with that red cushion and everything? You gonna be the ring boy? Jeff's gonna be a ring boy. Jeff's gonna be your ring out, Porky. boy. Oh my! Oh dear! Isn't he cute? I said, <laughs> Stop it, here, get out there, boy. Here, here. Now stop it. Now both of you, shake hands now and be friends. All right. Do I have to do it, Gramps? Now look here, Jeff. If I can manage to give the bride away, you can carry that little bitty pillar around for five minutes. But this is the last concession we're going to make. What's a concession? Uh, concession? Well, uh, uh, concession is uh, when you agree to do something that somebody asked you to do when they had no dad blame right to ask you in the first place. Now, you two go on and play and, and leave me alone. Okay. Come on, Porky. Come on, Dad? Yes, sirree. I say that you two be just about the handsomest men at the wedding. With your fresh suits and your clean shirts and, and your haircut. Haircut? Who said we was going to get a haircut? Grange affairs the same day. You weren't thinking of going to that without a haircut, were you? I wasn't thinking of going at all. And I ain't going to the Grange social. Oh, now, Dad, you have to go. I need an escort. You have to do this. You have to do that. I joined the Grains for business, not for social tea drinking all afternoon. Look, I'll make a deal with you. I'll go to one or the other. I'll go to the Grains social or I'll go to the wedding, but not to both. Well, now, no matter which one you go to, you still have to have a haircut. Well, I ain't got no time. I got things to do. Well, I'm sure Jeff will want to get one. Jeff ain't got no time either. When he gets through with school tomorrow afternoon, he's got to help me out in the barn. As a matter of fact, I've got something for us to do out in the barn right now. Now, I'll go and take off these pants, Jeff, and then you come out in the barn. I'll see you there. Sure. See you later, Mom. Oh, now, now just a minute, you two. Oh. That's it. All right. Let's hurry and get in the truck now. coming too. I have to get some things in Calverton for uh, Millie's wedding cake. Look, we got a lot of things to do. We got to market the potatoes, got a lot of errands to run. Well, I'll, I'll be glad to do some of the errands for you, and then you'll both have time for your haircut. <laughs> get in, sweetie. <laughs> You don't need to worry. I have plenty of time to get all the things you need here at the hardware store. Have fun at the barber shop. Well, Mom, the hair gets down my back and itches. Oh, nice hot bath will fix that up. A bath, too? <laughs> I'll meet you right here on this corner. Oh, my. It'll be so nice seeing the backs of your heads again. <laughs> like meeting old friends. Bye. Here you are, Ellen, out of five. Oh, thanks, Bob. Excuse me, Ellen, another customer. Oh, Shirley. Well, hello, Ellen. Oh, hello, Ann. Nice news about Millie Bradford, oh. isn't it? Yes, yeah, certainly is. Well, my goodness. Is that Mr. Miller and Jeff? It is hard to tell, isn't it? Ann, do me a favor, will you? Well, sure. There you are, you poor man. Hey, look here, wait a minute. Gramps, she 
dropped a dime in your hat. Where'd she go? Oh, ducked into one of them stores. <laughs> well, here I am. Mom, did you see what Mrs. Bush did just now? She dropped a dime in Graham's hat. Yeah, what do you think I am, a panhandler? Well, considering the way you two look, you can hardly blame her. A poor old man. His poor little grandson. And even a poor old dog. Well, we didn't have no time for haircuts. Had too many things to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I have one more stop to make. Where's the truck? Around the corner. Mm -hmm. I'll meet you there in five minutes. I just made an appointment for you two at the barber shop for tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Tomorrow morning? But, Mom, Porky and me were gonna... 9 o'clock. And Jim Granick says he's so busy with people getting ready for the Grange Social that you'd better keep your date with him. Because he says he's going to charge you for the haircut, even if you don't show up. He's gonna charge me for nothing? <sighs> young man. Hmm? You heard me. Time for you and Dad to leave for your haircut. Well, let me finish my breakfast, won't you? Mm-hmm. If you've been going fishing, you'd have finished a long time ago. Come on, now. Hey! Hey, let go! Hey! Hey! Come on, Dad. Off you go. You get the same treatment. When does a man get old enough not to have a woman tell him what to do? That's what I want to know. Get in there. Have a nice trip. That business from the back there to hold up the hood. Well, it can't be the plugs. I cleaned them last month. Or the points. Reset them same time. Well, it felt to me like she won't get in fuel. Thanks, Paul. I checked it this morning. Well, it could be the carburetor. What are you going to do, Gramps? Well, there's only one thing to do. Clean it. But that takes a long time. Yep. Oh. Well, we'll miss our appointment and have to pay for it anyway. Hmm. I got it. Where's Lassie? 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 Oh, honey, they should be back in about a half an hour. Why don't you go outside and play till Jeff gets back? Okay. Oh, and Porky. Yes, sir. Well, just so you won't starve before they get back, have a cookie. Mm, thank you. Hey, Mrs. Miller, here comes Lassie. I wonder where Jeff is. Wait a minute, Porky. She has a message. Dear Mom, truck broke down. Can't get to Barber on time. Please phone and break date. Expect us when we get there. Love, Jeff and Gramps. I guess there's no sense in your waiting, Porky. I guess not. You tell Jeff I'll be back later. Goodbye, Sylvester. You must be mad at me. Oh, oh. no, no. Goodbye, Porky. Fix them. Hi, 
Did you get our note? Of course. Yeah, sure was tough luck. Mm, sure was. Yeah. Gramps had to take apart the whole carburetor. Nothing the matter with it, though. No. You had to blow out the fuel line. It was clogged up. That was all the trouble, but it didn't take a second. You don't say. Yeah, too bad we had to miss our appointment. But then maybe we'll have better luck next time. Mm. Next time. Yeah. How to do, eh? How to do? Fine. <laughs> Dad, Jeff, come in here, both of you, immediately. All righty now. One way or another, you boys are going to get your hair cut. Who's first? Oh, but gee, Mom. Now look here, Ellen. I'm getting tired of this nonsense. I'm not going to have any woman tell me when to get my hair cut. I ain't Samson and you ain't no Delilah. You're right. Samson was strong, but you're just plain stubborn. Now, come on, who's first? Oh, now, listen, Ellen, be reasonable, will you? You don't know nothing about cutting hair. Oh, don't I? And who used to cut Jeff's hair when he was a little boy? It may be a bit rusty, but the shears are sharp. Now, come on, get up here. put them here on the table. Where are my scissors? Do you know? Know where they are? No, ma'am. Jeff? Do I, Gramps? <laughs> Did you hide them? No, Mom. Honest, I didn't. All right. How about you, Dad? No. Are you telling me the truth? Ellen, you know I wouldn't lie to you. Well, there must be something in this house I can cut your hair with. You think you're so smart. I don't know where those scissors went, but I think you do. Now, I have to go to Millie's and help with the arrangements. The wedding is tomorrow. Remember that. 
And you'd better get yourselves haircuts, even if you have to drive to Capital City for them. Nothing doing. I've got to tie the hen house roof. I've got some hens sitting in there, and pretty soon it's going to rain like blazes. I've been listening to the radio. There's been no such weather report. Look, the sun's shining. I don't need no newfangled contraption to tell me when it's going to rain. This barometer tells me. E.R.P. The hen house can wait. Your haircuts can't. And you'd better do it before I get back, or else. Look what I just found last. Get the tire bucket, boys, and the mop. That's enough, Chip. Okay. See you and Lassie, we're in trouble. <laughs> now, this kerosene won't do it either. Boggy, oh, get that pile of shears. Your mom, didn't we, Gramps? For no other reason, son. For no other reason. You smell nasty too, Mrs. Miller. Bay rum. <laughs> oh, good, gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Uh, this is she. Long distance. Well, who's calling? Hello. Where are you? Where? What? Uh, oh, no, you can't. No, you just mustn't. <laughs> All right, dear. Oh, of course I do. Good luck. Bye-bye. That was Millie. You know what? They couldn't face the thought of a wedding. Her husband's a very shy man. So they eloped. Eloped? You mean we got these haircuts for nothing? Oh, of course not. You're going to escort me to the Grange Social tomorrow night. Remember our bargain? Either the wedding or the social. <sighs> <sighs> 